Uh, response video to this guy here, Kwan guy. Um, I skipped over the introduction pleasantries. We are continuing our conversation on uh, ephilism, antinatalism. Um, and it basically revolves around this idea of what is a suffering, I think. So let's see how this goes. Um, and what okay, is a you pleasure? A lot of points in your video. Uh, I'll try to. Um respond, uh, I've kind of jotted down a few uh, kind of general ideas of what you're saying and uh, try to respond to the okay. points. Um, if I misrepresent anything you say, uh, by all means tell me. Um, okay, uh, first sort of main point you seem to be making throughout the video is that pleasure is, uh, as you've I said before, um, just satisfying a need or addiction. Um, Whereas I seem to see it as a kind of more of an important sort of thing in itself. A <laughs> thing in itself. You know, we have a name for it, but, you know, I'm just, what, what I'm challenging you to do is to describe to me a pleasure, and I will explain in a Freudian way the origins of it, how you're deriving the pleasure, and that the pleasure really isn't a freebie, that in a sense you've earned it. You've earned the pleasure by walking the desert, by um, having the deprivation. Come on, cat. I'm trying to do a video. Um, I'm trying. I'm succeeding, damn it. Um, anyway, um, and uh, so yeah, you know, I'm still going to challenge you to describe to me a pleasure, and I'll describe to you an explanation of how, like right now, I'm not comfortable. I'm just, I'm not horrible, but I'm not comfortable. And if I was relieved of my discomforts, my infirmities, um, yeah, it would be pleasurable. Phew. Um, I mean, if you're trying to make out that pleasure is not of value to because it's just sort of meeting a need or an addiction. Um, yeah, well, that's part of the argument. Like I said, I mean, I can still make the argument if we concede, if I concede that, that somehow pleasure is a true positive, that you don't have to earn it, that you don't have to have a negative state of discontent or disquiet or discomfort or dis business, um, to derive pleasure, let's say that were true, um, yeah, I'd still say that this suffering just way overwhelms any value to this pleasure crap. Come on, cat, I gotta make a video here. What do you want? I'm gonna go out? Sorry. Okay, I have nothing better to do than be a vending machine constantly. What are you looking at your dish for? So what, it's empty. Is it my fault? All right. I'll be back. All right, we're back. How long for how long? Who knows? Then, I don't think you're really... For me, you're not really proving that point. Um, I mean, even if even if I grant you, you're right, uh, that, that to, to get pleasure, you always have to meet a, a need or an addiction or a desire or whatever. Um, but I still uh, maintain that pleasure is a, a distinct... Um, quality, a conscious, a quality of like a conscious experience. Right? Well, again, I'm not denying it's not a conscious experience and that it's distinct in the sense that, um, you know, it has a character um, to it that's interesting. Sorry, I need some e-cigarette. Eh, can't find the damn thing. Anyway, um, but again, and improve to you. Well, okay, I'm not convincing you. That's the argument. I'm not persuading you to believe, okay? Um, likewise. And so that's sort of the stalemate thing, and that's sort of where this always comes down to, is, is that some people have a right to impose their perception of reality and invest other people in it, and um, they don't prove it to me first. So I'm, I'm saying you're the one doing or advocating for or defending the conducting of the biological experiments. I'm saying to the experimenters, give me an environmental impact statement. Give me something that, that explains that you understand this better than I do. Because I don't see anything but danger here. Um, and you're not doing it. I mean, I'm not the one who needs to do the convincing. I'm not the one doing the, the experiments. I'm not Dr. Frankenstein with the laboratory and the whole bullshit saying the game is worth playing. So I think it's the people who are playing the game who should be doing the convincing. Huh? Isn't that, wouldn't that be fair? I'm not the aggressor here. I'm the defender. Um, uh, there's still something about having a pleasurable experience that is different to anything else you experience. I mean, if you've never had pleasure 
full experiences. And one day you did for the first time, pardon me. Um, then you, you'd say, oh, wow, I, I just had something, there was just something different about that experience. And, Amazing. Yeah, well, amazing. Yeah, yeah. so it's just the same old jargon, though, but explain to me the experience, okay? I mean, most of our, um, you know, the experiences, we can go down a list, and they're all going to be this subjective crap, basically. And I, I'm going to call it crap. It's, it's most of it's crap. Ugh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this thing working. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's nothing brilliant in it. There's only uh, this this... Oh, that was brilliant. Oh, that was good. Um, over, overheat a little though. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm, see, I'm just not really, I don't have things together today. It's a tough day. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so I could go, we, we could talk about, oh, the, the joy of, you know, when your dog licks your face. Ew. Uh, the parade, right? Oh, the Mets won the World Series. You know, some sort of bullshit. And it's all that. It's bullshit. Or, you know, paradise, you know, and the dashboard-like kind of thing. Um, which is definitely a pleasure. I'm certainly, a, you, know, I, you know, certainly meant something to me in my life. Um, so I'm not discounting it. I'm just saying that I did earn it, though. It was the waiting and the waiting and the years of longing and desire and all that kind of crap that makes it worth it. And once you're satiated, once you've got a full belly and everything's done um, yeah you know you don't need for anything and you're not gonna work for it anymore um, that's just the truth uh, all right, I'll let you talk for a bit yeah, it's happened to me, so new. Uh, so um, I think it is a distinct sort of phenomenon um, and also, uh, yeah, morally, I don't uh, value-wise or whatever, I don't see why I can't sort of have attached value to those kinds of experiences, uh, even if it, it is meeting a need. Well, that's I'm not making a law against it. What I'm saying is, is that let's not let's understand the psychology. Let's not be duped by it. Okay, so I mean, a heroin addict can make rationalizations like, "Oh, well, you've never known life until you've known life on heroin." And, you know, you can make all kinds of justifications, but I think we know intellectually, um, you know, mentally, logically, uh, sensibly, um, you know, all those good oblies, uh, that uh, the heroin addict is only seeing it that way because of the addiction. And uh, I've sort of pointed this out before, but yeah, I mean, I'm a nicotine addict. I enjoy nicotine, um, but I only do so because of the addiction, because I become disquieted, uh, uncomfortable, um, this something or other, uh, if I don't uh, get my little bit of nicotine now and then, <laughs> I get uncomfortable, and I am comforted um, in, in, in response to satisfying the need, and I'm just saying that everything humans derive pleasure from, I'm going to argue, mm. Ugh, sorry, I'm having a problem just turning it on and off now. Anyway, um, yeah, they, you know, they're driving the... Oh, it's just still smoldering. Mm -hmm. Should be off. Well, I'll make sure it's off. Um, anyway. Yeah, this one's lasted a long time. I don't know how this one hasn't gotten burned up as I've fried it to pieces. I melted the tape right off of it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, play some more. Yeah, just shut up, Gary. Ah, space bar used to work. Doesn't work anymore. Well, that's a bummer. Ugh. Uh, they could be failed to be met, or is it a risk, or whatever. I mean, if I... If I thought smoking would give you more pleasure in your life than, than, than pain, uh, overall, including every all the repercussions of it, um... Then I'd uh, advise you to get that addiction. It seems to be an addiction worth worth having. Um, okay. Well, actually, in your point about whether okay, an addiction worth having. So you're just in trouble right there, in my opinion, um, because you know you're 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 just saying that it's okay to you know create the wound and bandage the wound, create the itch, scratch the itch, create the hunger, satisfy the hunger. 
and as if there's accomplishment intrinsically in this behavior. And I'm arguing, basically, that there's no intrinsic function in this. It's stupid. It's make a mess and then clean up the mess. You're better off never to have been. You're better off never to have mess made. You're better off never to have needed the need. Okay, we don't, you know, this again, I'm going back to this phrase that people don't want to mess with, but there's no need to create the need. And the need is entirely a perceptual thing, okay? The Cheeto has no intrinsic value. The crawly things on Earth has no intrinsic value. We value it because we we anthropomorphize on top of it and we we make it to, it means something more than it really is because we've given it a, a whole dignity and a whole survival story and a whole narrative and said, ah, that must go on. Uh, endeavor to persevere. And, uh, you know, stoically or in all these different manners through some sort of philosophical crapola. But the bottom line is, is we generate the need for its existence. It doesn't need to exist by some rational definition. So if there were no brains on Earth <laughs> contemplating the value of life being on Earth, um, the life being on Earth would serve no function. Uh, it would not be a purposeful adventure. It would be just opening a huge risk door for no reason, no good reason whatsoever. Uh, pleasure is um, always meeting a need. I actually don't uh, really, I don't actually agree with you. I think that my hunch is that, that pleasure is actually just this state that could be attained in a, in a mind. Um, Without it really being a need or something that there would be a, a withdrawal effect if you didn't have it. Well, that'd be an interesting uh, thing to prove, I guess, one way or another. I mean, that, you know, they really haven't done too much. They haven't had too much success with this sustainable comfort thing. Even in rats and other ex animals experimentally, the orgasm wears off. They can give them a little lever to hit to make them happy, but it, there's a point where it doesn't make them happy. Um... So I think there is a point where your physical body does have to be in some sort of state of deprivation for you to get that rush, that feeling of release. It's like you have to have a pimple to pop the pimple kind of scenario, and it's just the way it is. You can't, you know, if I just push on skin, it doesn't do anything. You know, I don't get any, ah, got rid of that pus thing. You know, I mean, so I think you really have to create the pressure before you can open the valve and let the pleasure fly out. Um, but I think because we've always we've always been stuck with being humans, we're used to the kind of psychological setup we have, where pleasure is a pretty much always a reward for something kind of to promote our genes, or something similar to something in the evolutionary past that would promote in our genes. And um, we're used to like our psychology um, doing bad things to us uh, when we stop having pleasure. I think that. We're wired to always have a kind of withdrawal effect when the stimulus of the pleasure is taken away. But yeah, who knows? Um, I don't. I mean, I don't think we're necessarily wired for it. Um, I don't. I, do, I just think it's the the desire mechanism are, are basically crude. It's the hunger thing, the the sex thing, and then the sex thing gets complicated, and the food thing even by this alpha thing, you know, about the, by this ego thing. So these are the three forces of desire um, that are um, that keep us in the game. Um, and there's not much. It's not much. There's not much to it. Yeah. I think in the future we could create a, an artificial intelligence that, um, I mean, to, to make a crude, a crude example is we could get a machine that's not attached to any, anything in the outside world that just thinks an, a happy thought and just get it on repeat, you know, just to repeat this happy thought. That would be a machine that would be uh, happy all the time. And I don't oh, well, whatever. Um, look, you know, I just don't think that goes anywhere as a... I'm sorry, it's kind of a dumb argument. It's not smart. It's, it's just not... It's not it's not scientifically coherent. Um, feeling machine? That's a big one, fella. Okay? Thinking machine is one thing. A logic processor, that's one thing. You're going to create something that can feel happy? Uh, yeah, we don't anywhere near doing that yet. I wouldn't describe it as a need or a desire. It's just 
having this pleasant thought. You might think it's having a need or not, I don't know. Um, but uh, my hunch is... You could well, yeah, I know, I just think it's a crappy hunch. Um, you know, my hunch is, is that if you create these, this, this feeling machine, that you're going to create it out of something very crude, and you're going to create it out of, ouch, you're going to create it out of a negative force, you're going to... You're going to pull the dark Vader force out of nowhere and pose it on something. You're going to Frankenstein this poor thing, this machine. And you're going to let it know what it is to suffer. And then you're going to know what it is to be, to see the light. So you're going to throw it in a dungeon and, and so it can crawl out of the dungeon. And in my opinion, to create this, to even the creation of this thing, will be a crime against this thing. Um, because you will have to make it dark before you can make it see any light. Do it more sophisticatedly and have a um, you know, proper thinking machine that, uh, that is just as the happiness knob sort of turned up and it just isn't sort of constrained by this um, kind of uh, evolutionary uh, set that we've, we've got. And, you know, it's free of our... Uh, our uh, needs, but does have pleasure. Um, one, one sort of little point uh, to you. You mentioned like an orgasm uh, being an escape from your sort of problems. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really accept that. Um, I think it's just uh, a moment of uh, extreme pleasure. I think it's just. Well, whatever, I don't think your explanation is going to be nearly deep enough uh, in terms of recognizing what's happening psychologically. So just say it's a moment of pleasure. It's just, I'm saying, the pleasure is made out of the distraction. Your brain is no longer focused on your discomforts, your tensions, your physical mortality, your physical, the gravity, every bit of the, the negative forces that are inside your psychology are released through that event. And that's where it's extracting the pleasure from, is that it's basically taking every little subtle crap that's in you and just letting all the crap fly the fuck out. And I don't think you're making an argument disputing that. You're just saying, nah, I don't like it. Nah, nah. That's not good enough. Anyway, be back shortly. Okay, let's finish up here, or something the close to it. The pleasure. And the reason you forget all your worries is because of the, the intensity of the pleasure. I think... You get the same with the pain as well. If a dog was biting my leg, I'd forget all my sort of financial worries. That's the same with intense pleasure. I think that's what causes the, the forgetting. If you were given an amnesia drug, uh, yeah, well, you're just basically making my point, though. I mean, this whole point is is that you're alleviating. You're, the problem goes away, and you feel good. If the problem stayed, you're not going to feel good. And that's the whole point. It's like a pain is extracted. It feels good. The point is, is our psychology is working the same way. If a negative thought exists in your head, I'm poor, and a million dollars shows up, all of a sudden you're rich. Now, nothing physically changed in your world. Nothing's better. Nothing's anything. It's just a thought in your head. I'm rich now is in your head. It's a confident belief. And all of a sudden now you're happy. All right, so the point is, is you had to be in a negative state first. You had to first need the million dollars before the million dollars could do anything like cause happiness. So the negative state has to exist first. The, 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 the negative alpha, the, the, the feeling not confident, not in control, not a master. All of these are subtle negative thoughts that exist in all of us, and it's the, it's the subtle releasing of that negativity that, is the, um, that finds its expression in what we call pleasure. Um, that's why we enjoy movies. We vicariously live. We vicariously defeat the enemy. Blah, 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 blah. And as, while we're doing it, we're completely um, not married anymore, and we're not got three kids, and we're not uh, bankrupt, and we're not all the other crap that we might be, uh, and such. Tell me YouTube, I guess. If you forgot everything about your life, then you would just sit there confused, just like wondering where you were. You wouldn't experience some sort of massive uh, the orgasmic pleasure. Um, okay, anyway, moving on to another point you make uh, throughout the video. Um, you say that, um, I mean, aside from whether it's a need or not, I guess, uh, 
you think the pleasure is just not that great and it's just not worth the pain. I mean, you think a sensible person would um, just wouldn't. Uh, well, look, I call it what it is, is, which is addiction. Okay, again, I keep saying, you know, that the point is, is that we have to kind of go through the lows before you can have the highs, and that's the roller coaster scenario. And that, yeah, it just isn't anything. Uh, most of our, most of the ways we derive our pleasure is exactly what I just mentioned with psychology, okay? It's just our notion that we need a million dollars. It's just a notion that you need this, or you need that, or you'd be better off this, or it'd be better if you did this way. Or you did. That's notions in people's heads. It has nothing to do with anything real. And I'm just saying, why, why, why risk horror that's quite possible here for the superficial satisfaction of ego bullshit? It's like, it's, it's not, the, our base psychology isn't any more sophisticated than racism. I mean, you know, our, our, our beautyism, our aestheticism, let's just call it aestheticism. You have a sense of, of proportion and beauty and, and color and all this kind of stuff. And when something is disruptive to that, when it's ugly in your eyes, you realize that that perception is just a perception. It has nothing to do with anything real in the thing itself. It has to do with your reaction to the thing itself. And that that reaction is completely arbitrary. And so, therefore, any need that's based on some sort of desire for that would be bullshit by its just nature. Do a pain to get uh, pleasure. Um, well, I disagree. I think you, from a rational individual's point of view, uh, whatever that is, um, and from society's point of view, I think it is uh, some... Uh, yeah, well, when you said rational point of view, it sounded like all you wanted to say was, yeah, most of us think so. And that's all this argument has ever come down to. There's no fucking argument here. There's nothing, you know, you're not giving me anything as a counter-argument. You're just saying, I don't think so, I don't think so. And everybody agrees with me, so we're right. And that's basically all you got is an argument, okay? Our psychology runs on the negative. If you don't have the negative, you won't get off the couch, you won't do a goddamn thing, because you'll be in a fucking euphoric state. And that's the dead state, is euphoria. Um, because the everything has been created. We have been completely lied to in terms of what we are chasing and its actual value. Because we have essentially been thrown in the dungeon to start our lives. And all we ever know is climbing ladders out of the hole life put us in in the beginning. Well, the pleasure is always enduring some pain. As well. For example, you... When you, you mention these people climbing mountains and stuff, you acknowledge some people do endure pain to get the pleasures. Um, idiots. Uh, yeah, yeah, idiots are idiots. Do, do, do it as well. I mean... Um, most of us? Most so, so, so again, so, so again, it's an argument about most of us. No, and most of us won't. And I'm saying that if I could monetize pain and suffering, I could put actual value on it, put it actually on the table, that if I gave people their life history are their possible futures, what they could buy immunity from, they would be bargaining away every bit of their pleasures Oops. Cigarette. Um, for um, immunity to the worst of it. And uh, that would be an experiment I'd love to be able to conduct because I think you're wrong. I think most people are full of crap. Okay, they're addicted. They're heroin addicts. They're going to justify their existence. All human, all things that are that are addicted to something are going to justify the addiction. That's going to be their nature, is to justify the addiction. Um, and so, yeah, humans do that. But if you really could, if you could change the game uh, to, to, and have them actually walk the walk and not just talk the talk. They talk the talk now because they don't have any choice. If you gave them real choice, um, I think the majority would, the rationality would, would prove itself. The, the intrinsic logic of the argument would demonstrate itself. And people would bargain for immunity. Would you like endure, uh, like, say, 20 minutes on a bus stop uh, in the freezing cold, uh, if it, that was on the way to a, like a hot date? Um, yeah, well, you silly things. Again, these are these are sufferings that we all have to endure. A cut finger, um, even even to smash something. Okay, but go, go get to something real, something that's protracted and miserable, chronic, chronic pain, um, uh, chemotherapy, chronic just suffering, misery. You know, feeling sick for hours and days and weeks and months, even maybe. 
Um, talk about some kind of real suffering and then talk about your frivolous crap and how it would be all worth it. No, I don't think so. Or uh, I would certainly endure a sort of slight pinprick in the arm in order to like, go on a hot date. Um, yeah, well, again, we're addicted. So, again, you're just ignoring the fact that we are in the desert starving. We have a mighty hunger. All right? So, yeah, the, this is a stupid equation. Compared to our hunger, the pinprick is nothing. It, it, compared to relieving the hunger, the, the gnawing, aching hunger. And that's what we're built out of. So, again, if you're not going to accept the fact that this is an addiction model, one built on desire, and we're not talking about a fair contest between pain and pleasure, we're not putting them on a fair scale and saying, here's the pleasure you'll get, here's the pain you'll get. There's this element of desire in here that's fucking the game. And you're not conceding that that is breaking the scale. I don't know why you'd have to have a pin brick in the arm to go on a hot date, but uh, if, you, if you had to go through that, you, uh, I think you, most, most kind of single men would. Um, so, uh, yeah, you mentioned... Well, you'd have to qualify it for me nowadays. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It'd be more than just the, the, the promise of a date. There'd have to be, like, somehow it's going to work out, and it ain't all going to turn into shit, and I'll be just left with a pile of shit in the end. As an example of, um, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get eaten by a crocodile for three minutes, like, slowly, uh, in order to, uh, have a hundred orgasms. Um, yeah, I agree, I wouldn't do that. I think most people probably wouldn't. Even if, even if the crocodile wasn't, didn't do any permanent damage, if I was suddenly magically restored to the back the way I was before the crocodile came along, I think the pain of it would be greater than the pain of the the, hun the pleasure of the hundred orgasms. Um, well, I, I think you could go a lot higher than a hundred, uh, re but regardless. The interesting thing is, uh, as a utilitarian, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in weighing things up like that, and I accept, like, pain and pleasure are kind of like apples and oranges. They are two very different things, so the only way I can think of... Um, well, they're really, you know, they're different, but they're they're made out of one thing. And pleasure is the absence of a misery. It's the absence of a negative state of being. It's an ac a absence of any kind of you know, um, motivating um, thing that needs to be corrected. The absence of the need to correct anything, um, to fix it. Um, and that's how we derive it. Is it is a, like I said, most of the things that we derive pleasure from are things that have some connection because of evolution to health and um, well-being of the reproductive alpha animal. Um, so, uh, yeah, and so they can't be strictly compared in, in that sense. But I think they can be, but the point is, like I said, you have to go back to the word desire. You have to go back to hunger. It's the hunger, 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 hunger. Hunger, hunger, hunger. So use that as a metaphor for the horny and the, 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 the ambition and all these other concepts that motivate us. And it's just the fact that we have to be hungry for it to see any value in it. The value isn't in the thing. It's in our need for the thing. So if, like attaching a value, like, uh, like a, a score to a pain and a pleasure, um, is to say, like, this kind of compensate conversation approach, as I call it, uh, to say, like, how many, you know, orgasms would be worth three minutes with, with a crocodile. Um, I mean, personally, I think all these pains can be weighed up, and I think that I would endure that crocodile sensation for three minutes in order to have orgasmic pleasure on tap for the rest of my life. So, I, I think there is a point where I would endure it, um, uh, but I certainly wouldn't take this view that, that you can't endure and you wouldn't... Well, okay, I, I'd just like to put it on the table. I'd like to be, I wish we could do it for real instead of just talk, okay? Instead of it just being talk, I wish I could put you in the, in, next to the shore and say this is the contract you're signing, okay, for these next three minutes. Um, and then, yeah, you'll get this, whatever it is, you get the whack-off 
so what the hell? I mean, this is, I mean, you really have made it so obvious that this is just bullshit. It's out, it's made out of nothing. Uh, I mean, you're going to do that, you're going to sit there on the shore, looking the crocodile in the eye, and say, yeah, for, for, you know, an orgasm that'll become part of my memory in, like, about 15 seconds, yeah. And, and really, if you protracted one, can you really imagine how that would work over time? I mean, realistically... I mean, isn't the whole point of the thing wearing off is because it's got to wear off? Because, yeah, that's all it was, was in a, a moment's um, relief. And, and that uh, it's almost be impossible to, to maintain that for any protracted amount of time. And even if, even if you did maintain it, that's the trick of it. It's almost your sense of time is broken in that moment anyway. So you won't even, 10 hours will be 10 minutes anyway, because your, your sense of time is so distorted. But anyway, I just don't buy it. I don't buy you looking in the eyes of that crocodile and saying, oh, yeah, I'll go for it. I don't think so. Endure anything. I certainly endure pinprick for a lot of small pleasures. Um, so um, I don't see anything wrong with it. From an individual point of view, uh, you know, kind of selfish point of view or rational point of view, whatever you want to call it, or from a society's point of view, I don't see anything wrong with weighing uh, enduring some pain. Oh, you don't say, look, that's not the subject. The subject is you have a right to, to use your uh, balance of equation, the, the equation you're just basically pulling out of your ass as you're demonstrating here, right? I mean, this is just, you're just saying, I just think so. It's my impression. That's good enough for somebody to impose it on somebody else, to say they know it's worth living, they know it's worth getting eaten by the crocodile for the stupid frivolous orgasm, for the jelly beans, for the I successfully you know, whatever, drew a smiley face on asphalt and it made me go, ha, ha, ha. Now, somebody's just going to tell me on this jackass planet that that makes them happy, that that's worth getting eaten by a crocodile for. And I'm going to say, are you fucking out of your goddamn mind? And that would be just fine if I wasn't, if they weren't imposing it, their judgment on somebody else. So the subject of anti-natalism is, you have it in the goddamn title, is should goddamn people have a goddamn right to shove it down other people's goddamn throat when they have nothing? They have this ambiguous statement I generally think so. Well, that's not fucking good enough to shove it down somebody else's throat. That's not fucking good enough to sign the contract for somebody else and throw them into the fucking crocodile's mouth. Fuck. I don't think there should be kind of uh, prohibition on that. Uh, but more on that in a minute. Um, okay, also in the, in the video you, you, you repeat this point that you think there are more p pains than pleasures in the, in the world or in... In my life, you specifically say, for more blights and pleasures in my life. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think that's what I said, so regardless, I don't think I said it that way anyway. you got to be a little careful um, if you're going to paraphrase, you know, to be somewhere in the ballpark. Um, my, my point is, is that I'm certainly aware of the fact now, especially of how superficial my pleasures have been, how trivial and idiotic they were. They were just a thought in my fucking head, and I could just make up the goddamn thought. I didn't have to actually fight the fight to have the good feeling like, oh, I won the fight. I could have just fought the fight in my fucking head, said, I win, and left it at that. Um, that's how fucking stupid this whole psychology that drove me for my whole fucking life was. It's just a fucking desire machine, and everything I desired was shit. I don't... I'm still going with these surveys. Most people say they're like 8 out of 10 for happiness. I don't have any much else to go on. Um, you say, okay, these people are breeders of breeders. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, nothing else to go on, by, by, but again, yeah, the, the, the testimony of the loony. So let's go ask the assholes what their opinion of asshole is. I mean, that's not going to work. That's a good phrase. Um, these, these people have evolved, so you can't expect an objective point of view on life. They're going to be really... Well, you can, though. That's the whole point. You can if they have some kind of reverence for fucking intelligence. If you have any kind of goddamn respect for the goddamn truth and facts and a rational argument, um, well, then there's no problem here. Then your fucking conditioning won't own you. Um, but the people don't have that fundamental thing necessary to a fucking rational conversation or a rational argument. Is that they just don't give a fuck about the goddamn truth. They just care to hear the story that makes them feel good. 
and a story that makes them feel good is somehow their dopey notions of what's beautiful or what's superior or what's, you know, blah, 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 somehow means something, and they don't mean a motherfucking thing. Uh, but I think evolution works a bit different than that. I think it, uh, the way evolution's made us all like, carry on the species is more by making us like sex and like... Oh, please. Again, this doesn't have anything to do with any kind of modern, civilized human being. A modern, civilized human being is perfectly capable of separating their reproductivity from their sexual behavior. It really isn't a problem. There's lots of surgeries you can get if you can't handle the simple little procedures you go through to prevent pregnancy. So this argument means absolutely nothing on this subject. If there are people still recklessly reproducing because they had sex, um, those are called idiots. Those are called fucking morons. And maybe we shouldn't give them the fucking right to raise kids. And uh, I think it's really important to so raise children, to look after young humans. Um, so I don't think Mother Nature is necessarily, necessarily going to make us so really positive about our life now. Um, it just, um, I think it... Well, you sort of missed the point. I wasn't arguing about them genetically being controlled. I was arguing that they're being raised by idiots, by religious nuts, by other kinds of crack philosophy. Those are the people who are breeding. People with a cracked philosophy are the ones who are fucking not separating their sexuality from their reproductivity or are stupid enough to think there's some point in reproducing. These are the fucking idiots of the planet, and they will be raising children with their same idiocy. And they might have a lower IQ to boot. I mean, it's a, there's, there's probably a genetic component to it. But I'm not even arguing the genetic component. I'm arguing the social component. Uh, in fact, you could imagine us being really negative on ourselves all the time. In order, maybe nature would do that to us in order to spur us on or something, you know. This carrot or the stick kind of thing. Um, but... People seem to be saying they're happy overall, and I think it seems more like people... Yeah, well, again, I don't care much about what they're saying. What I'm saying is if we put it really on the table and they had to actually do it, if you knew exactly what was going to happen, exactly how you were going to die, all this other stuff, I'm saying people would do it different. They'd do their life over. Lots of people would like a do-over, all right? <laughs> That's just a fact. And uh, so this is just... This is just bullshit. There's no fucking point in asking them, are they happy? They're not going to sit there and say, no, I fail at life, I'm miserable. They're not going to do that. But we can see it in their behavior. How many people are alcoholics? How many people are divorced? How many people have this completely dysfunctional lives? How many people have completely fucked over their kids? I mean, get fucking real. Where's the brilliant success story? How many fucking assholes on this planet are you going to point to and say, I want their life? Show me. Give me the list of these people that you want to live their life given that, that they are happy than that they are unhappy. Like, you could be right, maybe they are given the opposite answer to what they're really experiencing. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, well, like I said, what, what alternative do they have? We all, we're living on planet, make the best of it, right? That's what everybody's doing. I'm just saying that if you're going to be true to philosophy, if you're going to be fucking honest, um, yeah, well, this make the best of it crap isn't being the truth. That's just being, okay, we're in the cesspool, let's figure out how to live in a cesspool. The, we're, what we're talking about is whether we should turn the spigot on the t cesspool, whether we should turn the fucking cess off. That's the question. That's the fucking subject. The subject isn't how to make do, or should people make do. The point is, is how should we continue to perpetuate the fucking experiments? Anyway, the last point, uh, you say, um, as a lot of people have said, uh, that you shouldn't inflict one pain on one person in order to create pleasure for another person. Um, I've been rambling quite a long time, so I won't go into too much detail on this one. I'm happy to talk about that again. Uh, a lot of people, as I say, sort of think your kind of angle on that one for the sake, because of individual rights, or like the separateness of persons is... Uh, a phrase that um, I think John Rawls, a philosopher, came up with. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a quite a common position. Um, I kind of just think that um, it is worth doing it to one person for the sake of another, um, and uh, 
we want to. Yeah, well, like I said, that's why I guess I have to make distinctions. And so, yeah, I won't be a utilitarian now, even though I thought that was a perfectly good word. And instead, I'll be a negative utilitarian, because to me, it's no, okay? I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to prevent a greater harm by imposing a harm, a smaller harm, well, that's fine. Um, but this whole idea that you're going to sit there and impose on somebody else and say he's going to have to pay for your extra, you know, not that not because you're in some really harsh, deprivated state, but because you want something. That's all. You have a notion in your head that says you need a million dollars. You're going to be happy if you have a million dollars. So you're going to take the million dollars out of somebody else's pocket who you say doesn't need it um, or whatever the rationale is. Well, that sounds like bullshit to me. And one argument for that is that the whole society seems... Like a tra transport system wouldn't function if it wasn't for, you know, uh, we wouldn't be able to have a transport system if it wasn't for the few people getting accidents. I and mean, we wouldn't be able to make, we can't make it 100% safe. And so some. But isn't that another one of these issues? We can do things fail safe. We just don't pay for it, okay? We're not going to pay too much for it. And that's the bottom line. So, yeah, we're assigning the disasters to the suckers, the losers, so to speak. And uh, we'll, we'll hang out in the people who didn't lose. I mean, these are lotteries, just like there's lotteries where it's all or nothing. You, know, you pay a buck, and you got a chance at a million. Well, there's lotteries the opposite way, okay, where you pay a buck, a harmless little thing, and uh, but somebody's going to lose really huge, okay? You're only going to lose a buck. They're going to lose $10 million. Um, these are games I don't think anybody should play. Um, you should pick straws for yourself and for no one else. Um, I mean, we can't deny that we live in a society, and so I'm not advocating that people have no responsibility to that society. So I, I guess I don't want to be emphatic that th there's never a circumstance. What I'm saying is it's justified to prevent harm. It's not justified for, um, you know, superficial pleasure. So, I mean, you know, you don't steal from the rich to buy the poor a yacht. You steal to the, from the rich to give the poor um, comfort, to, to get them out of the, the hard fetters, to get rid of the hard suffering. Um, that's justified. In order to travel around like we do, um, some people have to, have to be killed and have to be injured. So anybody who thinks you can't inflict any pain on someone for the sake of uh, pleasure... Well, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to argue that I don't see how you have a fucking right to play with anybody else, ideally or, um, uh, you know, perfect, but by some sort of reason, fair logic. Why should you draw straws and then hand somebody a short straw and just say, tough shit? That sounds bogus to me. So unless they signed up to get your short straw... You haven't got any right to throw it in their hand, in my opinion. You've got to throw it into somebody's hand who says, I want it. And that's the catch here. All right? So until you can make this a fair game, you've got no business playing the game because these aren't fair rules. You're, 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 the, this, if we did this in some other way, this random on this, um, it wouldn't work in any other kind of sport. Okay? You couldn't have these kind of random rules that all of a sudden you just shoot one of the players. All of a sudden you break one of their legs. You just arbitrarily decide. I mean, this is bullshit. I uh, didn't really need to turn the camera off there. Before finish we up here. To say that we, um, we, we can't hardly do anything, really. I mean, especially if you take the pinprick as an as example of pain. I mean... It's impossible to live. Well, whatever. I've, I've repeatedly said you can play these games if you want to. I'm not arguing for pinpricks, okay? I'm arguing for the hard misery, hard, brutal horror that is imposed on people. So you want to keep playing pinprick games, go ahead. But it has nothing to do with the reality on planet Earth and nothing to do with any kind of realistic prospect for the reality on planet Earth. So, again, it's just sort of a bullshit argument. I mean, obviously, as people who have lived in the dungeons and the worst deserts and the fucking cockroach-infested hells, um, pinpricks are going to be meaningless to human beings who have done a lot more than that, a lot more suffering. You're, you've, you can endure probably more getting through the first year of your life. Than, than, so, so, I mean, it already becomes irrelevant because you are, you are, you are desensitized just because you are, you are in such a... a, a, a a state of want and need and desire and 
uh, in a state of fear and, and brutalization and all this other crap. So, yeah, it doesn't work on us anymore. But that's only because we are so bludgeoned. We, we are already got a fucking hammer in the middle of our goddamn head. And you're talking about relieving um, stickiness on the end of our fingers. Yeah, well, the stickiness on the end of our fingers is not going to mean much when we got a hammer still on our fucking head. So when you make a deliriously, perfectly sentient individual who has absolutely no encumbrances, no miseries, well, then that pinprick is going to mean something. But it's not going to mean anything to us with fucking knives and swords and hammers in our fucking head. Without uh, inflicting pain on people. But you, I think you accept that you, we shouldn't be really existing. Uh, we should just end everything, I think. Uh, so it's good that you're uh, prepared to, um, you know, stand by what you believe in. And you, you, I think you do take your beliefs to their kind of logical conclusions, as I try to do. Um... Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't really try to do that. I haven't really had to sacrifice anything, because I'm, unfortunately, I'm not the one who needs to, to to take responsibility and fix the problem. I'm not the one creating the problem. So, quite obviously, there's no threat. I'm not, I'm not, you know, sorry, spider that had to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't really like living with spiders. <laughs> he's, he's, he's foobard now. Oh, God, this is a pain in the ass. My life is really a mess at the moment. Um, okay, so anyway, I think, I think we're done. Yeah, let's see if there's anything at the end here. Okay, uh, anyway, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks very much for your videos to me, and, uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, righto, and so forth. Yeah, we'll see where we go, but yeah, we got a fundamental disagreement on a couple of subjects. Number one, desire, uh, the, the creation of the deprivation engine, that that is the whole illusion. There is no real cheese, it's all fake. Um, the value isn't intrinsic in anything, you can't make a logical argument defending it. It's not like a band-aid where you say, oh, band-aids are very good because they heal wounds. Human beings don't scratch an inch of the universe, they don't satisfy a desire in the universe, they don't do a damn thing in the universe, they only do something for the perceptions in wacky people's heads. And so if you just eliminate the perception, then the need disappears. There's no, it's no longer food because there's nothing hungry to eat it. Blah, 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 blah. And that's the safe road. That, that's the place the, the, the logic goes because you've got nothing to gain. It's a zero-sum game. You're just having a delusion that you're accomplishing something. All you're doing is digging yourself out of a hole the DNA molecule puts you in. All you're doing is digging your way out of a hole that the DNA molecule puts you in. All you're doing is digging your way out of a hole that the DNA molecule puts you in. Yeah, three times is probably enough.